Hey guys and welcome back to another one and today I'm going to share with you my review of the Nvidia Shield K1 tablet and before we begin the video we'd just like to mention that having used and tested several tablets in the past it is on my opinion of course at this moment really difficult to find a tablet uh, for the price point of the K1 that can deliver not only the same performance but also the same amount of features or capabilities that this one can deliver especially in the area of gaming. Now now, as always you will be the judge of it and hopefully this video will help you to decide if this is the tablet for you or not and that being said let's go straight for the video And here we are with the NVIDIA SHIELD tablet K1 that features the ARM Cortex A15 quad-core CPU, the NVIDIA Tegra K1 GPU, 2GB of DDR3 RAM and 16GB of flash storage with Android Lollipop on an 8-inch display with a resolution of 1980 by 1200 and going through our usual quick unboxing experience, once we open the package we will find the Shield K1 protected by a plastic envelope and a user guide. And that is it. So for those of you that are thinking about purchasing this tablet, just make sure that you already have a USB to micro USB cable or get one on the side so that you can charge the tablet as soon as you get it. Now once we turn it on we will face the usual Android setup guide and in no time we are ready to use it. And a nice surprise was an update to Android Marshmallow 6.0 waiting for me which as you can see it's an online update so no asshole at all. Just press the button and the device will do everything for us. And before we move on, one of the features that I love on Marshmallow is that now we can effectively make use of the external storage to install apps, especially heavy apps such as games, giving us the freedom to have much larger storage space than what we get with any device that we purchase. And now taking a closer look at the K1, on the left hand side we will find a headphone jack, mini HDMI, micro USB and a left speaker. On the right hand side the right speaker and regarding the speakers, beside outputting sound on both sides the output as well to the front, which on my opinion is great when we use the tablet and held. Moving along to the top, one micro SD card slot, a volume rocker and a power button, at the front left a 5 megapixel front facing camera and finally at the back that shield logo along with a 5 megapixel pixel camera. And in terms of build quality, I really liked it. It feels really solid on the hands, all covered by a nice rubber material that will help to have a better grip on the tablet. And although some might say that it doesn't look premium because it hasn't a metallic enclosure, my opinion is that Nvidia here really nailed it, building it in a material that will actually take some abuse from us. And moving to our usual benchmarks on network speed test using a power line adapter, we got 76 megabits per second on download and 20 megabits per second on upload. Which, by the way, the power line adapters that I'm using at this moment are the Devolo Power Line Adapter Kit with gigabit connection and Wi Fi AC. And for a full review, just check out the right top corner of this video. And on disk speed test, we got 95 megabytes on reads and 53 megabytes on writes. Geekbench 3 with 1136 on single cost score and 3570. 78 on multi core score, Anton 2 with roughly 9 1600, 3D Mark Storm, I Storm Extreme maxed out as expected, and finally on Epic Citadel 56.6 frames per second of average score. And in terms of performance on all the tests that I performed, it had no issues at all, everything was very responsive, and honestly, I was not expecting any less. Also, to mention that although we are talking about a tablet, I do actually highly recommend to use a gamepad such as the iPEG 9028 or the NVIDIA gamepad to be able to take full advantage of the NVIDIA Shield gaming features. And talking about games, we can use it to play Android games that are featured on the Android games menu, but as we are using pure Android, we can install any game or app available on the Google Play Store, and for this type of game that is optimized for mobile devices, we can just use the touchscreen or optionally a gamepad. And next we have the GeForce Now that I covered on my NVIDIA Shield TV video review, and although I was a bit Bit concerned about not having a wired connection to the internet, I must say that it played everything perfectly. Every single game that I tested run without any issues at all, but have in mind that this will much depend on the power of your network. 
And finally, in terms of gaming, the PC game stream, which is the one that we can stream games from our computers to the Shield K1. And those that follow the channel know that this is my favorite one, especially because I can access my own Steam game library. And in terms of results, once again, everything was just perfect. And also tested out the video playback performance with the latest version of Kodi. And in terms of playback, it's capable of playing 1080 files with no problems at all and even some 4K files. And although the CPU is totally capable of running the most demanding video files, we are limited to a Wi-Fi connection. So if it's not strong enough, we will see some files stuttering. In terms of playback, I was able to play my 1080 library and also Big Bug Bunny and Tears of Steel up to 4K and Sintel up to 1080 as the 4K version did not have have enough network bandwidth to play it smoothly and all videos were shown on the creative commons 3.0 and all credits too are down below in the video description and as usual my last test was with airplay using my favorite app which is airpin pro and the results once again were just flawless i was capable of testing the airplay capability with the iphone 4s and the ipad mini with retina display both on mirror and also on streaming and lastly mirror my wife's imac to play back live slideshows from our photo library and doing my usual test with magazine style slideshow, sliding panels and vintage prints, the experience was very smooth both on image and also on audio. And to finish up, I also streamed a Apple event and the result was just as good. So the tablet is capable of streaming high bitrate files without any issues at all. And on my opinion, of course, is that everything that we have seen so far on this video is also possible to be played on our TV by connecting a mini HDMI cable to the Shield and to our TV. And all we need to do is select the mode that we prefer. And honestly, I prefer the console mode that gives me the feeling of being using a Android TV box with pure Android that I simply love. And for those of you that have 4K TVs, we also have the option to output 4K, which is just awesome. And in terms of battery, the overall duration of any mobile device is very subjective, but I made some sample tests that hopefully will help you to see what is the average consumption. And by the graph, we can see that YouTube playback and game stream in console mode will consume roughly 6% during 30 minutes, while Kodi playback and game stream will drain 9% over 30 minutes of usage. And before we move on to the conclusion, just to mention that as usual on any mobile device that I test, you will find a link down below in the video description with a photo and video raw file so that you may judge the quality for yourself. So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most were the build quality of the Shield K1 tablet, the Android Marshmallow 6.0 update, the great overall performance, the online updates that I love, and finally being able to be used in console mode connected to our TV. On the other hand, things that I did like the least were just one, and it is that I would like to see a USB to micro USB cable included in this package. And that is it guys, we have reached the end of another review, this time the NVIDIA Shield K1 tablet. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.